back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Janet. I make content about photography, uh, lifestyle content like day in the life, that type of stuff. So if you're interested in that type of content, be sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned. Today's video is going to be about uh, photography movies that I binge watched this past weekend. So let's get right into it. The first movie is going to be The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. Y'all, I'm telling you, this movie had me in a feel-good chokehold, y'all. For real. Um, this movie is about um, a photographer. Well, he's not a photographer. He develops film. So he works for Life Magazine. And he is the um, negatives asset manager, I, I think. I think that's what it's uh, so this photographer that he's been working with for a long time same guy's been sending in photography sales and stuff like that uh, so they're they've been bought Life Magazine has been bought out by this other company and they're wanting to run one last print issue of the magazine so they end up Turns out the photo that they want to use for the last cover of the magazine is missing. So Ben Stiller, Walter Mitty, uh, ends up going on this long adventure to try to find this photographer and figure out what happened to the native. You know, how are we going to get this resolved because this is the last issue. Like the most important, other than the first one, the most important issue really. So, he is on this long adventure. I'm talking about this man went from doing literally mundane work. Like, he, he'd go to work, he'd go home, you know, he might check out a couple of dating sites. Not, not really putting too much thought into his dating profile, nothing. Like, plain dude. This dude is so plain. This man ends up jumping out of an airplane with a drunk pilot, by the way, <laughs> jumping out of an airplane, um, fighting a shark, like he's doing all these adventurous stuff just suddenly as he's looking for his photographer to find his photo. So he ends up finding the, the guy up in the mountains or whatever, and um, he, so I'm, I'm back up, the photographer, when he sent the role of film to be developed, he also sent Walter a gift, a wallet. Um, and, you know, along the, the adventure or whatever, Walter actually throws the wallet out at his mom's. And, you know, at the time that he did it, it's like, oh, this is, you know, it's just like a frustrating moment. The tension has built up. Kind of like the climax of the movie, pretty much. And so, um, Walter ends up finding his photographer up in the mountains. And um, he's just asking him, like, dude, I've been on this adventure to find you. Like, I, every time I think I'm getting close, you end up somewhere else. So he ends up finding him. And he's like, where is the photo? Where is number 25? Um, and the photographer's like, I put it in the wallet. And, and Walter, at this point, after going through all this stuff, he's just like, why would you put it in the wallet? Like, this is the one that you want me to use, but you put it in the wallet because you thought it would be cute. Like, what is... Why? <laughs> and so, um, the photographer was just like, so you never looked in the wallet? You didn't... You didn't think of the... I said, look inside on the wallet. And was like, no. Tell me what the picture was. What was it? So he's like, I mean, Jesus had to figure it out. And so y'all, at this point, I'm just like, he done came all this way. Tell this man what this picture is. So uh, Walter's now on another adventure to find the wallet. You know what I mean? Or really, at this point, Walter's just like, it is what it is. Whatever. So he ends up meeting up with his family, uh, his mom and his sister. Um, and they're attempting to sell this, this piano that his dad got for his mom. 
And so I was just like, you know what? It is what it is. I on my family. And mom hands in the wallet. The wallet, y'all. The wallet. So he takes the picture out. It's, and it's in a tiny, the tiniest um, little envelope I ever seen. So, of course, he don't open it. It's part of the movie, y'all. He don't open it. So, he ends up taking it to the people who bought out his magazine. And he's just like, we put a lot of time and effort into running this magazine. And you coming in. Basically, tell him off. He's like, you just coming in and want to change all this stuff. And, like, turn it into whatever you want it to be. But we've been working on this really hard. So, he hands him the, the picture whatever. And then the final issue of the magazine comes out and y'all i'm telling y'all I, when, I, when they actually show what it is i was in tears y'all shambles shambles like a movie of a movie but i, I like movies like that they can move you and make you feel something because that's the point so he ends up going to like a, a magazine stand finds the magazine and it's a picture of him y'all picture of Walter Walter's sitting outside of the the, build, the magazine building uh, where he works and he's looking at negatives and stuff that, that are about to be developed and I just thought it was so I thought it was so nice such a nice tribute to the people that work for you know he's got like a dingy office like down in the dark, like he's in a dark room basically where he's standing and doesn't get much interaction with the people that he works with day to day except for his little team which is like him and one other dude I think and it was just nice to see like him get the recognition that I felt like he deserved so 10 out of 10 definitely 10 out of 10 uh, yes this next one y'all that I watched, horrible, horrible. This movie was made in 1977, it's called Double Exposure. And I hated everything about it. I know, I know. Not even the pictures was good, y'all. I'm telling you, like, I didn't like the storyline, I didn't like the way the movie was filmed, I didn't like nothing about the cinematography, I didn't like the score of the movie. Horrible horrible movie and you know so the plot of the movie let me just tell y'all the plot of the movie is about this mobster type of guy who he has a mistress and he, he basically hires a photographer a well-known photographer to take photos of his mistress right and so <laughs> the mistress ends up getting kidnapped and held for ransom. Like, this is random. It's just random. It's ran like, why? Like, obviously, the mobster guy or, like, politician. I think he's a politician that's also doing, like, mobster stuff on the side. But still, this lady ends up getting kidnapped. And he's just like, ah, well, she's been kidnapped. It is what it is. They asked for this certain amount of money by this time. It is what it is. Like, He's not concerned at all with, with this woman. So, so then, so then the photographer, he like takes off his photographer hat and he's like, I'm in full rescue mode. So he ends up going to get this woman, setting cars on fire. I'm like, why? Like this is, it's, the movie was just outlandish to me, <laughs> but so he ends up going to get this woman. Tell me why she goes back to the monster dude. I'm like, he wasn't even concerned with paying your ransom. It's not like he didn't have the money. He got the money. He got the money to, get, to save you. And he's like, no. Nah. No, nah, they she can chill for a little bit. She, she good. I'm just like, <laughs> so... I, this this movie was supposed to be a thriller, they said. I wasn't thrilled. Not one thrill. <laughs> Zero out of ten, y'all. 
It's a zero. I'm sorry. I know. I know. I'm, it's zero out of ten. The next one, the next movie that I watched um, was called Polaroid. This movie right here, y'all, Polaroid was actually, it was all right. I mean, I think, so in this one, right, it starts out kind of weird. Cause they, and they never really explain why it happened like this. But the movie starts out with this girl who like finds her mom's camera or something like that and so the she like taking pictures of herself she took a picture of herself or her friend took a picture of her and so this camera is haunted I guess is the, what they trying to say the camera's haunted basically and so because the camera took a picture of her she ends up dying right and that's like the whole plot of the movie pretty much anybody that takes a picture with this camera ends up dying or anybody who's seen in a photo that this camera has taken they end up dying it, the movie's about a dad who at least according to us he lost his daughter right so he lost his daughter and he's out for revenge his ghost now because he, he did his ghost is out for revenge so um after this first girl dies the camera's like donated so it ends up in like a, a camera shop you know just amongst some some cameras and a girl who works there she actually ends up taking the camera and that's how the camera gets back out into the world so she started taking pictures of her friends at parties and different stuff like that. The first and like the first picture that she took is of this guy, young kid about the same age as her. He also works at the camera shop, but he ends up dying. And so everybody's like, "Oh, it's really sad that he died. It's out of left field. We don't know why, but you know he he he's dead. So let's move on." But then the girl takes pictures at a party and the people in the picture start dying. And so she's just putting two and two together. She starts doing her own research and stuff like that. And she's just like, this camera's haunted, y'all. But the people, her friends, of course, don't believe her. They're like, girl, I'm gonna have a camera on. So one of her friends ends up burning, he tries to burn the photo and the people in the picture catch fire. When I showed that in that movie, I was like, all right, well, we didn't figure out what's going on, but stop playing with that camera. Let's do something with the camera. Get the camera out of people's hands. Take the film out of, I don't know, something. Do something. And so they spend the rest of their time trying to figure out this mystery, like why is this man attached to this camera? And so come to find out, um, from talking to the sheriff, the um, dad, so the daughter, the, the daughter of the, the dad who's attached to the camera, she, you know, is obsessed with this camera. She, she got it for, she got it as a gift for, at some point. And she's just obsessed with this camera. She takes it everywhere she goes. And she was taking pictures of people at school. Um, and then they ended up basically harassing her to the point where she took her life. At least that's what's being told us, right? Then the dad found out after she took her life, and he he found out who the people were tortured them at the school. This man is torturing them at the school in the basement, dark room area. And so the police kick in the door, shoot the man dead. He fall backwards into like the development basin or whatever and he died so but he had the camera in his hand which is why he's now attached to it i guess so then um the kids find out that everybody who was in the every the four people that was in the pictures have all died except for one who the, the last one would have been? The sheriff. <laughs> so, so they they 
get the sheriff back to the school and they're going to take a picture of him so that you know the ghost quest can be complete I guess and then he can just go on about his business whatever um basically trying to save the rest of their friends by sacrificing the sheriff <laughs> so, so um the sheriff is like y'all got the story all wrong the dad is the one who took the inappropriate pictures of his own daughter and we found out and trying to stop him or he tried to stop us before we could tell and that's how you know this all this came to be and i'm like you why are you just now telling him this like in this camp y'all you were you just like oh they died i'm all right i'm just gonna go on about my life like no there's people still alive that can tell this story so why wouldn't you want the truth to be out right I don't know. I, I just felt like it felt negligent to me because you were the sheriff. Right? I don't know. Anyway, so this man he ends up dying of course because they take a picture of him. Um, so now they're like, we don't know what to do. Because dude's still coming after him. It's like, alright, this, this sheriff he, he got gone. But the ghost is still after them because they they have taken their own pictures, right? So at this point, I'm like, take a picture of him, right? Y'all tripping at this point, take a picture of him. But you know, they gotta progress the movie. I'm over it at this point. I'm like, come on, wrap it up, <laughs> right? So they end up taking a picture of him finally. Um, and he disintegrates or whatever. So, yeah, I mean, the movie is, it, it has some twists, it has some twists and turns, so I think I'll give it a solid six. And five. Five or six. I'm gonna go with five. Yeah. Because <laughs> once you figure out the actual story and you can put two, two and two together, like, well, off him, you know, get him out of here. Um, so yeah, I'll give it a five for sure. The last one though. This last one had me in my feelings again, I'm not gonna lie to you. I think I actually cried like four times at this one. You know, it's called Chrome, right? And I this is in my feelings. In my feelings. So it's the father son story, right? And Basically, the son has a bone to pick with his dad, who's dying. His dad is dying, and he's got, like, a month, two months, something like that to live, right? Not very long. And so, the son is just like, hey, look, I don't want nothing to do with my dad. Like, you know, the dad wants him to go on a trip with him to develop some film, some Kodak film. Um, on the west coast and he can't I don't know if it's the west coast I think I'm making that part up anyway he wanted to go somewhere with him to develop some film right and the, the son is just like hey I'm done like I don't care you know you're trying to make amends you're at the end of your life and you're like I, you need, need to make amends I don't want to hear it you know what I mean and at first I'm like yeah I mean I'm feeling kind of bad. I'm like, I know your dad, you know, everybody's parents do stuff that they might regret, you know, as you're growing up and stuff like that. But holding a grudge about it, like, sometimes I can, I can understand. <laughs> really, sometimes I can understand where people are coming from with that. But I also, I just was like, I don't know if I would be, if it, I don't know that I would be that quick to be like, all right, well, I'm done. You know, I think I still would want to have said my piece, you know. So the dad's manager, he ends up basically sweetening the deal for the son to where it's like an offer that he can't refuse, pretty much. Uh, 
he's like about to be let go of the job. He's like a a band manager. And he just lost one of his clients, a big name client. So he was like, I gotta do something to revive my career pretty much. Um, and so the, the dad manager sweetens it and he's like, all right, I'll go. Whatever. And so they're just taking a, a trip down memory lane pretty much. Um, him, the dad, and the dad's nurse, which is actually um, Elizabeth Olsen, right? Wanda, Wanda Bishop. Cool, right? Um, it's another star studded cast, like uh, Secret Life of Walking Mandy, pretty much. Um, Jason Sudeikis is in it, and I can never remember. I, it is something. He played in Westworld. Great actors. And him and the, the dad are just hashing it out, and they're like, hey, you know, they going tit for tat. They're going, you know, back and forth with each other. And then it's some really messed up parts, man. Like, they end up going to the dad's brother's house who raised the son while the dad was, you know, taking pictures in Africa or working on a project, something like that. But he was not there when the boy's mom died. Like, he was cheating on his mom. It was just a mess. A mess. So, um, yeah, they end up stopping through to see the aunt and uncle, and the dad is like rehashing stuff. He's like, Richard Wise is nice. It's a mess. It's a mess, y'all. I'm telling you. But the movie is actually good. It's really good. I, it's a messy part. I just got to let y'all know that. So they end up going to meet this band, right? And then the dad has like a he has like an accident where he wet himself or something like that. And the band starts like basically heckling him and making him feel bad or whatever. And the, the son is just like, you know what? Like I would like to sign y'all and work with y'all, but he he basically sends his dad. Um, and so the dad is still like being mean about it or whatever. And so the nurse basically defends the son, like, you got to cut him some slack. Like, he's really, he's trying to be there for you as best he knows how, like, and you don't deserve it. And so the dad fires the nurse. I'm like, oh, he already been calling. He's not going to turn out of this. So, um, yeah, so the, the son and the dad, they end up uh, getting a little bit closer because the son comes in to check on his dad and he's like, hey, let's go ahead and drive that film um, up to, you know, let's finish the last leg of this trip and be done with this, right? So, he comes in and the dad's just on the floor. He's like, oh my God. So they end up going to the hospital, right? And the son at this point is like, man, I mean, I have been a little bit hard on him and you know, maybe there's a way we can work past this or whatever. So, um, they end up having like a heart to heart. And, uh, he breaks them out of jail. Cause the, or I said jail. <laughs> the hospital. Uh, cause the dad's like, you know what? I have been, I've, I've made some mistakes and I haven't been the dad that I was supposed to be, but one of my shining moments the most shining moments of my life is when your mom will be sleeping at night and I, I could get up and feed you a bottle in the middle of the night. And I was like, that's so sweet. Y'all, that's so sweet. That was the most heartfelt apology I've ever heard in my life. Like, this movie was so cute. Like, you just go watch it on Netflix if, you, if you're interested. But, yeah, like... So the son is like, I'm going to break him out and we're going to finish this trip, right? So they end up going and, and they end up going to this film shop. They arrive and, and they're right, they're just at the right time, right? So they get the film developed or they, they submit the film to be developed. Coming out and they're just talking to people in the lobby. And because earlier the song was like, Dad, you ain't never done nothing for nobody to remember you. Nobody's gonna care when you die. Good punch, right? And 
So people just pop in to the dad and the log and they're like, oh, I love your work. You inspired me to become a photographer and this and that. And they're just talking to him. They're making a big crowd around. They want to take pictures with him and stuff like that. And so the son is just sitting back like, hey, you might not have been as good to me if I would have liked, but I could see how you would pay for these people's life for the good. And that's, you know, that's something. So um, he, they end up going back to the hotel or whatever. And they're supposed to have two separate rooms, but they end up in one. Um, and then the dad is just there cleaning his camera up like he always does. And then uh, the son goes to the bathroom, take a shower, he come out. Dad is just killed over. Sad, right? Sad, it was just reconnecting. And so the guy who owns the camera shop of the film development, have the lab he ends up coming to drop off the film and the son flies back to the dad's house and so he's there and he's uh looking through the film or whatever um, the developments and he's just like so touched because it's a role of film him and his mom and his dad really but it's them, him when he's a little kid. And, you know, it's just, he's just flipping through, looking at all the different slides. And then the nurse comes in, uh, and they're looking through together. And it's just so sweet, because I'm like, he is able to find closure with his dad, but also start a new relationship with somebody who was close to his dad in, in the final year. So he, he the movie kind of ends with them looking at the film, but it's still really sweet because I'm like, they get to share stories of different parts of the dad's life as they grow their own relationship, um, which I thought, was, I thought that was actually a really nice bold way to tie up the, the movie. So yeah, y'all, 10 out of 10. I love it. Loved it. Love, love, love that movie. Um, and I wouldn't mind watching it again, actually. That's how much I liked it. So, yeah. If any of these movies interest y'all, you end up watching them, come back and let me know what you think in the comments. Like, I've actually seen other photography movies, like The Photograph with Issa Rae and uh, Lakeith Sanfield. Love that movie, too. I didn't watch it this past weekend, but yeah, if you think of any other photography movies or you want to suggest some movies to me to watch, go ahead and do that in the comments. Like this video, you know, subscribe, subscribe to the channel. Um, yeah, I'll see y'all next time. Peace.